Hello, this is lecture 11a part 2 for Calculus 1, Advanced L'Hopital's Rule. My name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida. So we've been doing a whole bunch of theory, and I've been kind of sneaking in L'Hopital's Rule a little bit because it's kind of fun. Um, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, it's not as much theory, although the theory is cool. You know, sometimes you just want to compute something and, 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 and get the right answer and get that little shot of dopamine that says, I did it. So let's do a little math joy here and do a little shot of dopamine. So we've already gone over the, the, the quotient forms of L'Hopital's rule. These are the zero over zero infinity over infinity. Um, so these are things like, um, you know, I've got sine of pi plus 2x over sine minus pi, and, you know, I, I, I want to, I'll get sine of 3 pi, which is 0. I get 0 over 0. So I take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. I don't do the quotient rule. I do the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately, and I wind up with something that I can direct substitute on. I get negative 2. So this is a kind of 0 over 0. And I can also do it with something that's infinity over infinity or negative over infinity over infinity. And these we've talked about before. Those are the undetermined forms. And it should be noted that 0 over infinity equals 0. That's determined. Infinity over 0 plus is positive infinity. And infinity over 0 minus is negative infinity and so on and so on and so forth. So there are some determined forms that aren't the zero over zero of infinity of infinity. Well, I can also have products. So let's look at one of those, uh, and I could do doubles, um, which we did before. Let's talk about products. We haven't done products yet. We've only done um, uh, uh, the, um, we've only done quotient so far. Indeterminate products are things like zero times something infinity, okay? And the trick here is you convert it into quotient rule. So the big thing, I'm sorry, you convert them into quotient, so not rule. So the big idea. So the big idea is that I convert it to something that can be put in the form of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And the first one of these, there are a bunch of these obvious ones. So if you see something trig, Try it's in you know if it's if it's secant try one over cosine right, um, but let's look at one of these simple ones x times e to the negative two x. This screams hey put the e on the bottom and make it e to the two x. And if I do that I do a little L'Hopital's rule here. I'm going to get an infinity over infinity. I apply L'Hopital's rule. I get one over two times e to the two x. The bottom goes to infinity. I've got one over infinity and that equals zero. So these are these easier product ones. And those are the sorts of things you see on the test, right? Because we don't want to, do, you know, so some of these products, you can wind up, if you don't do them right, you can wind up doing them, you know, forever. So the easy products, we like these for, you know, the test. Harder products, they're fun, but they're a little bit hard. And the trick is to find some kind of quotient. So if I've got the limit is x goes to zero to infinity, I have x, and I have ln of x, and I go to zero plus, of x times ln of x. This piece here goes to negative infinity, this here goes to zero. Now, I could put either one on the bottom. So I could put x on the bottom as x to the negative one, or I could put ln of x on the bottom as ln of x to the negative two. Well, you have to kind of try both. And the one for this one is actually to put the x on the bottom as x to the negative one. So I put it on, and then I do a little, you know, power rule on the bottom. I get negative 1x to the negative 2 on the bottom. I get x to the negative 1 on the top. Well, that's actually nice because I pulled this 2 up the top. That becomes a negative x squared, and I've got an x to the negative 1. I simplify that down to negative x, and that goes to 0. So these are the harder uh, products, you know, a little bit too hard, uh, maybe this one is just borderline whether or not we could put it on the test because this one you would only have to try you know you try one and it doesn't work you try the other and it works um but you can get really long ones especially with the, like the tangent and stuff and you can wind up on a different road now i don't want to go too much into L'Hopital's rule in the class as a focus so everything up to here these are kind of eh Everything above we can really is, is fair game for the test.
Now, the stuff below that I'm about to do, the, the summon differences, this stuff won't be on the test, but it will be on the bootleg. Um, now, I don't want to go off on the Lopatel's rule because it's not really one of our main stories. Our story is about the derivative and the idea about derivatives and what they tell us about functions. And Lopatel's rule is not really part of that story. Um, it's fun. It's cool. Um, it can tell us a little bit. So I, I'll get to some of these other ones that are kind of cool applications. But, you know, they're fun, they're cool, but they're not really part of our story. So we can just call this, call this you know, some other stuff here. But let's do differences. So let's do the difference. Here I've got the limit is x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over x plus ln of x. Well, this is going to be an infinity plus a negative infinity. This is going to be infinity minus infinity. And that's not defined. That's bad. Okay? So infinity minus infinity is not determined. And the trick to these, again, we want to put them in quotients, is to take a common denominator. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide, I'm going to, I'm going to, put, I'm going to multiply this by x over x right here, the second term, and I wind up with 1 plus x ln of x all over x. Now, the top here is going to go to 1 and 0, and the bottom here is going to go to 0 plus. Well, now that I've done this, I actually don't need L'Hopital's rule, because this right here I can actually figure out already. Right? Because this is going to be, this right here, the top is going to, well, that's fine. The top is going to 1 plus 0. The bottom here, oh, this part I do need L'Hopital's rule for, but I already figured out what x ln of x was. That was right here. So, I just did that. I could use L'Hopital's rule to figure out this piece, but I just did that. So now what I've got is 1 plus 0 over 0 plus, and I've got infinity. So this right here refers to this problem here. I already did it. I'm not going to do it again. Here's another one, secant minus tangent. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a common denominator. The common denominator is cosine. So now I'm going to have 1 minus sine over cosine. The top is going to the 0, the bottom is going to 0. Do a little L'Hopital's rule action. I get cosine over sine. If you get cotangent, okay, fine. I get 0 over 1, that's 0. Okay, let's look at one that's, these are the exponent problems, and these are a little trickier, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to exploit something, okay? I'm going to exploit the fact So if f is continuous, I can actually move f across the limit sign. And e to the u and ln of u are both continuous functions where they're defined. Okay, so let's look at how I'm going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take e to the ln of this. Now, all I did was move the e in. And I'll show you why I'm using the exp thing. All I did was take the exp of the log. And since these are inverses, I can do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move exp out. And I can do that because exp is continuous. Now, ln of x to the x is really x to the ln of times x ln of x. All right, now I've got something I can work with. And this x to the ln of x bit, I've actually already done that. I already know that that goes to 0. And the exponential of 0, well, that's easy. 
So that's how you do those x to the x bits. And you'll see this again on the bootleg where I've asked you to compute the limit as x goes to zero plus of x to the one over x and x to the one and the limit as I go to infinity of x to the one over x. Okay, well that's it for this little part two. Don't forget there is a part one that you need to watch as part of this. Um, uh, oh, extra 11a. Um, and next time what we're gonna do is start a, uh, optimization. So I will see you next time. Uh, goodbye.